Greetings, servus and welcome back to another video on my channel Boonetics for sim racing beginners and enthusiasts alike. How do you get faster with the Mercedes AMG GT3 car uh, on Misano? How does it handle on Misano? How do you drive the Mercedes on Misano? And what do you need to look out for? Is there any special setup, um, any special tricks and tips? So all of that I'm gonna share today with you. I want to deep dive with you into uh, Misano. And I know there are a lot of different track guides and, and instructions out there and for the perfect race line and everything, but I want to, um, you know, take the step and show it to you, especially with me in the uh, Mercedes AMG GT3, because the car is a bit different. Um, it's a front engine car, but it is a bit different in terms of setup and behavior and feeling. So I want to take the Misano track deep dive, if you want to call it like that and, and, um, do it as simple as possible so that especially if you're a beginner and you also want to uh, improve and learn more about it have an easier time with it be sure to uh, just subscribe and if you like the video put in a thumbs up so that you will not uh, miss any of future updates you can also activate the sub notification bell i would really much appreciate any feedback uh, in the comment section below so with all of that out of the way i would just say Let's get on the track at Misano in the beautiful Mercedes. So first of all, um, I want to show you the, the first real quick lap I managed, which was uh, 135.6. It was uh, the first time for me to actually dipping down into the 135s. And um, then a day later, I managed to do a, a 134.8. And so I can show you a bit of the differences and what I, you know, was was um, really paying attention to and trying to do. It was interestingly enough, honestly, both laps were not perfect laps, especially, well, to, to be honest, they, they were far off, far away from perfect. But um, I understand the track better, I understand the car better and I know where I can even improve. Uh, with the time it's just uh, putting all the perfect sectors together and yeah that that's basically the, the tricky part so let's just hop into the car into a new perspective and let me explain you um, the important sections and how I approached uh, the different turns Okay, here we are. Um, I selected the uh, back camera view because I can show you better, you know, how much of the track I'm using and uh, what's going on with the car. So let's just head on to the start finish straight. First thing you want to do when crossing the line is get as much as possible to the left side. And then the first brake marker here is actually the 50 meter board. So as close as possible to the 50 meter board, however you feel comfortable, just, you know, try to, to kind of like step by step brake as close as possible to the 50 meter board. And what we are gonna do here is we shift from a uh, fourth down into the second with the Mercedes. And then we basically throw the car into the right with as much speed cutting as much as possible from the corner while already applying a little bit of um, throttle. And the cool thing here is actually you can cut a lot of the first corner and you can basically ignore the black and yellow bumps because the suspension of the Mercedes doesn't really care. So you won't really feel anything. And while you are throwing the car into this corner, you already want to apply a little bit of um, the throttle to then really take a bit of speed into the next left, which is a, a pretty narrow left. And you basically just throw the car also into the left corner, cutting as much as possible. And again, again ignoring the black yellow bumps. And then you want to floor the accelerator as soon as possible without um, sliding out. So always be careful, you know, even though you use traction control, just kind of progressively push down the pedal to the metal and then floor it. And what you want to do is keep the car here in the middle of this section. You don't want to go right to the outside because we need to take 
the car into the next ride and you just stick with the accelerator a hundred percent throw the car and then cut this right corner section completely as much as possible you do not stick with this um, ideal line from the racetrack that's wrong you want to throw the car into this cutting the corner staying on the accelerator and just really grip your steering wheel really hard as the car starts to maybe wobble around a little bit as it, it seems to be a bit of a slippery asphalt section here so don't worry go with the car keep it on the track it doesn't really matter if you like you know get the left uh, half of your car a little bit on the curbs here and then the next brake marker is actually the uh, end of the red section here approaching the 50 meter board and what you want to do here is shift down into the first gear and then really throw the car in very tight through this um, very narrow turn and also cut as much as possible you can nearly use all of this section here into the red and just you know same thing here once you are at the apex slowly and progressively go on to the accelerator to rotate and stabilize the car while doing so and then what you do is while approaching the next section you can see there's just a short amount of full throttle that i'm getting but I turn in the car to the right and while doing so I lift the throttle and what what it does is actually it rotates the car easier into the direction I want to go and as soon as the car does that um, I'm already uh, you know pushing again onto the throttle and you can cut basically the whole corner into the red section there and then stay as much as possible to the right so I'm already on the accelerator again short section of like 100% full throttle until there and then you do the same thing into the left section you go as much as possible to the right you lift the throttle a little bit um, like you know indicator is where the white to green section here starts lift the throttle while already pointing the car to the left and then rotate the car in cut as much from the corner and then just floor the pedal and take as much speed out of this section you can even use some of the curbs on the right side and then you take the car just straight ahead, cut a little bit of this and you know, really aim for the 100 meter board. And there, the next brake marker is the 100 meter board with the white line. So depending on your um, confidence and brake balance and tire temperatures and pressures, you should be able to even brake a little bit after the white line. And what you then can do is use a lot of this section. You see, um, as long as the left half from your from your car with the tires is on the curbs here is not an issue with um, track limits and then shift it down we just reach fourth gear on this straight because of the, the the high gearing from the mercedes shift down to second and like right at the end of this turn into the first and approach the turn from the outside it has a very late apex and it's actually as soon as you kind of reach the apex you can already floor progressively the pedal again you know not immediately full throttle but really progressively and take as much speed as you can and use the track limits on the right side use the curbs here and the red don't be afraid just take as much speed as possible fourth gear take the car to the left and then our next brake marker is before the first right hander so we already want to start braking here we do not cut around this section we keep the car basically um, in in the right half but we do not cut here and then what we want to do is while we are braking into this section so we go down into first gear and then really throw the car as tight as possible and cut as much as possible in the second right hander so here i was a bit off you can already cut pretty much more of this section here and then accelerate as soon as possible you know progressively apply uh, throttle and then take as much speed and use the track here on to the to the longest um, straight section where we take the mercedes up into fifth gear um, we cut a little bit here we use a bit of the track here and this is basically um, another tricky part as you're braking while you're turning in the car so you don't really cut as much here you want to keep the car um through the middle and then let it um i don't want to say drift but you know let it kind of move to the outside use the track and break down into the third gear and while you're doing so you want to release the brakes 
and then throw in the car in third gear and already be on the accelerator while cutting around this corner. And what you then do is just let the car move to the outside here. You can even use more of the curbs and brake marker is the white line. And then hard braking while turning in to first gear into this turn and you can cut also again. Use all of the track and keep it very tight. So I was a bit far off. You can even move the car more and cut more. And the thing is, if you do so, you can go very early on to the uh, throttle and take as much speed as possible and help rotate the car. I even had a slight moment there, but that didn't really disturb me. So take the car to the far right outside. You can even move, use more of the curbs here and then really throw it into the left by just, you know, turning in slightly and then lifting the throttle to rotate the car and cut as much as possible from this. Again, black and yellow bumps don't really bother the Mercedes. So again, I just lifted the throttle a little bit and then full floor it, full acceleration ahead, use the, the, the side limits. And then next brake marker is the 50 meter board with like the white red section here. If the board is not standing anymore because somebody was like missing, missing out and crashing into it, always look for the red, for the white here and the red section to brake. And what you then want to do is you can already while braking move the car in and cut a lot of this left corner. That's a bit far away so you can cut even more and put the, the left side tires onto this part. Cut a lot of the track and then be on the accelerator very early and take as much speed as possible out of there. So this was for the uh, 135.6. Let's just uh, wait for the confirmation so you that, uh, know that I'm uh, telling the truth. <laughs> and uh, it should pop up and yeah here we have this was the 135.6 um, was already very excited about that um, but as you have seen it was not a perfect lap it was good but it has had a lot of more potential so let's just switch to the improvement i had on the next day so here we are at the next day and funnily enough you will notice it's night and uh, I did my best lap at night. Um, so as you can see I was already lapping into the 135s and getting a bit faster than the day before. And if you have seen my Monza um, progression video you might notice also the fastest times were at night. But um, I think that's just a happy accident, a uh, funny coincidence because um, track temperatures shouldn't be like really any relevance. Most of the hot lappers go for like, uh, you know, warm to hot conditions under daylight. So here it was like 18 degrees track temperature. The session before was like 36 degrees uh, track temperature. But um, the difference here was that I was really pushing hard and I was just not sure where to find more time. I kind of had an, you know, inclination, a feeling on where I could improve. But then uh, during the course of this session, um, a Ferrari and another Porsche joined up and they were uh, lapping in the 34s. And I was like, how are they doing that? And you know, one tip, just jump into the car when you're in the pits and uh, watch the other driver what they are doing. And I saw in uh, like especially the second and third sector a different approach and how much more of the track limits they were using and how much more they were throwing in the car you know and that's just one one of the other things that you really have to trust your car and have a good feeling for the car then you can throw it into corners and floor you know the accelerator push the pedal to the metal even harder so here we have the first indication of the 134.8 and let's just jump to the car and show you what i did So I know it's a bit darker now, but I hope we can still see enough. The track has really good lighting, so um, this should be of no worries. I'll try to make it shorter than the first session. So again, um, onto the straight, move it to the left, shift down to second gear and throw it into the right while braking as late as possible and cut as much of this corner and then throw it first gear into the left and then floor the accelerator as soon as possible. Cut into this section. So you will notice when you want to look back that I cut more of the track and took more speed out of the corners and basically utilized, um, you know, my, my accelerator, like really progressively went on to the throttle way earlier and way more aggressively because my feeling for the car was way better. 
and you will also notice that here I'm breaking a bit later nearly after um, the red markings and throw the car into the right little bit of acceleration go more to the left and take more speed and be longer on the accelerator through this section cut the right stick to the right throw it into the left and here again I'm cutting way more off the track as you can see you can move really up to the second row of curbs and already be here on the accelerator and you know throw the car out of there and take as much speed as possible onto this short straight. I'm even bumping a little bit, little bit with the car but that wasn't really any problem and then move to the outside. I'm braking, look where I brake, I brake way after the the white line and the 100 meter board as you can see here so that was really a good break point and then just you know take it even though I wasn't as close as possible you can cut even more of the corner and apply accelerator earlier to take more speed onto the straight so that was not a good exit nevertheless I took a lot of speed and improved and here while taking it into this turn stayed very narrow cut a lot of this corner that's I would say maybe uh, the best way to do it um, basically at the limits with track limits and then I'm already here on the accelerator so I'm basically not really finished with with uh, turning the car through this section but I'm already applying uh, some throttle just progressively and really push the car onto the straight so although it did not look as smooth as it could it was really really fast and then cutting here what I didn't do in the previous and then here the same thing um, even though I said in the previous lab do not cut as much I tried different variations and it actually works in both ways you can stay with your car here but you can also cut a little bit and then break more to the outside and turn the car into the next right hander. So this was actually something different that I tried. I didn't really go much to the outside left. I basically stayed in the left half of the track and I'm already breaking here. And then my uh, intention was to cut a lot of this right hander and take more speed. Let's see if it works. Boom. You see where I am. You could even maybe cut a little bit more, but um, already I'm <laughs> three quarters on acceleration. So I was really throwing in the car very hard, accelerating out of it very early and then using more of the track here. As you can see, white line is again our brake marker. Yes, it worked. And then throw the car in a bit later, even though I could have cut it more of this section. Be on the accelerator, see no movement there. Move the car to the right and then hard throw it into the left. I'll still full on the accelerator as you can see right now. Turning in the car and then very very late just lifting the throttle shortly and then boosting through this section again. So this was perfectly. A lot of speed braking at the 50 meter board and throwing it into the left turn very very hard. And again even though I could use more, I didn't do in this case. You, you could even throw it in harder, utilizing the second row of the curbs, taking the speed onto the start finish straight. Again, using a lot of the right side and bringing the car home. This was an amazing lap. Um, I was so excited, as you can see, the confirmation 134.8. But as you have seen, there's still so much more potential and um, I can already kind of um, see where I can improve to even you know get close to the high 133s but this is like really just a hunt for the perfect let time that is not really um, necessary if you want to do that for for uh, for a race. So I hope this was uh, insightful for you to, you know, improve uh, if you are uh, driving with the Mercedes AMG GT3. It especially um, is not only for the car. Um, you can uh, try the line and, and this direction with any other car. I just um, wanted to provide this point of view as I've been 
training a lot with the Mercedes and, and make it my, my primary car that, that I use for all the races. And um, yeah, it's, it's really fun to hunt for, for a quicker lap time. But you know, the other thing why you should practice like that from time to time um, is because you can improve the feeling for the car and the, the track and especially um, find out about certain limitations or tricks or shortcuts for the track while hot lapping or even though in multiplayer while hot lapping in a free practice server um, where not many other people are or you know just to like I did take inspiration from another driver who is maybe a second faster than you and you know just watch him and see how does he approach different corner sections where is he cutting how is he handling the car and the, the thing with the Mercedes AMG is actually that um, the car with this setup is very stable and you just can throw it in and floor it and it just sticks with the racing line. It's, it's just an amazing car. However, you, you should uh, pay attention to a few things with the Mercedes. One is that even though you can floor and push the pedal to the metal, you should do it a bit carefully in the sections because the car will immediately tell you if that was um, too much of acceleration too soon. And the other thing with the Mercedes is it really likes to turn in when lifting the throttle slightly and then applying throttle again. So as I showed you in the different sections, when you just, um, you know, want to turn the car in, the really important thing is to give the steering input, to give the car direction before you apply the brake or before you lift the throttle. Um, just a slight nudge to the right or to the left and then just you know give the direction lift the throttle you will notice that the mercedes is turning in and then when applying the throttle progressively again it rotates even more so this is what the car likes it does move in under braking however not as good so one of the important outcomes i had of these two days of hard practice at uh, misano was steer enough give enough steering input i was not giving enough steering input and i will show you now and um, the onboard footage of my fastest lap so in between pay attention in the corners of how much my steering wheel is actually moving into it into every direction so this was also an important learning outcome for me so pay attention to the race line pay attention to my braking how i uh, you know give direction to the car when braking, when lifting the throttle and how I apply the accelerator and I'm pretty sure that you will improve on Misano really really quickly the way I did. So I'm just now jumping into the cockpit letting you enjoy my fastest lap without any further commentary and afterwards just show you the setup and also um, provide a download link for um, the setup in my discord channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to ring the sub notification bell to not miss any upcoming videos. Leave a like, um, give me feedback in the comments. Um, uh, I'll really much appreciate any, any feedback that I can get to improve on my content. And I hope I see you soon on my channel. Take care and enjoy racing.